Okay, so I'm making this video after the Sharks just beat the Kings for the sixth time in seven games. And so maybe I'm being emotional. Maybe my hot takes are fueled on just disappointment and anger. And I'm not thinking as clearly as I should. But it's no secret the Kings are terrible. And it's official. It's been official for the past, I don't know, seven, eight games, but it's officially time to sell. The trade deadline is on Monday, and there's been talks, a lot of talks, on who the Kings could trade away, what teams could be interested in them, what would you get for the guys who you could trade. And so I just wanted to kind of talk about that for a little bit because things need to happen before Monday. For the past two years, the Kings have made trades, and I think very good trades at the trade deadline. I like Rob Blake. I like the moves he's making. I expect that if guys are moved, we will get good value for them. And I think we have valuable players on this team. So right off the bat, what do we look at? Well, the big red UFA right at the top, Alex Iafalo. I love Alex. Alex I follow. I really do. But there's been no contract extension. Usually, if you're going to keep a guy and you know you want to keep him, you extend him earlier in the season. We're seeing this a lot. For instance, Tanner Pearson today got re-signed by the Canucks. So there's not been an extension for I follow. I follow has been pretty much from his debut the first line winger with Kopitar and Brown. And he works well there. He he really does. It's clear that Kopitar likes him there. He gets goals. He gets points. He's a good player. A very good player. And whether he's playing with Kopitar or not, he's going to be a good, impactful player. He's a guy that I think a lot of teams are interested in. A lot of teams could use. I think back to the Blake Coleman deal uh, when Tampa Bay got him. They paid a first-round pick for Blake Coleman. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I follow is better than Blake Coleman. So if the Kings were to trade him, which I'll explain in a sec, I think would be the right idea, I do believe that they could get a first-round pick. And it's going to be a later first-round pick, but think back to a guy like Toby Bjornfa when we traded Jake Muzzin and we got the first-round pick that ended up being 22nd overall. That was a great pick. Bjorn Fott's a good player. It, a first-round pick is a first-round pick, no matter where it is. And Alex Iafalo, I feel like his spot in the roster going forward, as we have all this youth and all these very high-talented players, is not going to be first-line left wing. And so unless you're going to tell Iafalo, look, going forward, you're going to be a bottom six guy. And... You know, I don't think you're going to give him a huge raise if you're going to lower his minutes, lower his impact on the game. I feel like the right move would be to move him for for Ayafalo himself and for the team. We can re replace Ayafalo with many guys. Arthur Kaliev, to me, seems like the perfect slot in. Maybe not right away. Maybe let him finish the year in the AHL. But that's a guy who, when you look at the Kings going forward... He's a top-line scoring winger that you put with playmakers like Andre Kopitar. So, in my opinion, I follow for other teams is the most targeted. I think it's the one that if you're a contender and you want a guy who obviously can play on the first line, he knows how to play with very, very high-end players like a Kopitar. He understands his role. He'll understand his role, whether you're putting him on the third line of your playoff team or the first line and want him to be a more complimentary player, he'll do that for you. And I think any team that goes for him is getting a very good player and he will help wherever he goes. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say it's probably a 6 or 7. I'd say it's the most likely move that the Kings make. I don't know if the Kings are going to make it. I think they really like Ayafalo. It's It's a weird... It's a weird one, but you do also have to look at his age. 27 years of, of age. It's not like he's one of the young guys. He's he's kind of in that middle group. And 
you know, it's time for him to get paid. He's going to want to raise. And I don't know if the Kings, it's in their best interest to pay him a four or $5 million a year, keep playing him with Kopitar and take up a top six role for a young prospect that we have plenty of. The next guy I'm going to talk about is Athanasiu. The interesting thing with Athanasiu is he's a restricted free agent. I know a lot of Kings fans really like him. He's coming off a game where he had two fights, I guess. And I'm critical of Athanasiu. I think he's on, he has unbelievable speed, obviously. One of the fastest guys in the NHL, if not the fastest. I think the skill is there sometimes, but it's not consistent enough. And I don't think he's a complimentary player. One of the reasons I feel like Gabe Velarde is struggling is because he's playing on a line with Jeff Carter and Andreas Athanasiu. And it's just not a, a line that meshes well together. When you look at the, the Grundstrom, Moore, Jared Anderson, Dolan line, that's a line that everyone has a role. They understand it. They work well together. And that's why they succeed. Same with the Kopitar line. Everybody has their role. They have different skills. And they know how to play together. The second line this year has never been cohesive. It's never felt like a line that really works off of each other besides the random two-on-0s or two-on-1s that uh, Carter will get with Athens CU because of their speed. But I just think, <laughs> I don't know if you re-sign him. I really don't. I don't think Athens CU is a top six winger like he's playing right now. I think he's the perfect kind of depth forward for a really good team. Just like what happened last year when he got traded to the Oilers. I think that's the perfect position for him. Put him on a, a competing, a playoff competitive team with really good players and have him kind of be an X factor in the bottom six that you throw out there in the playoffs who can score you a goal out of nothing. Like I said, Personally, on the Kings, I don't think he fits. I know a lot of Kings fans like him, but he's a guy that I think you could get a couple picks for. Not first rounders, but maybe a second, maybe a couple third and fourths. And I just think it would be a smart move because the Kings really do have a bottle neck and a log jam uh, when it comes to the, the 12 forwards on the team. Um, not so much right now, but definitely next year and the years going forward. So it just, it frees up a spot. It gets us assets. And I think for him as well, I think he would be put on a team that would utilize his ski, his speed and his skill more than the King's system does. Next guy I'm going to look at is Blake Lazat. I like Blake Lazat. I don't think he's good enough anymore. I don't know if this move gets made because I don't think there's a market for Blake Lazat. But it's just very apparent that he just lacks skill. He's an incredibly hard worker. He battles on the boards for such a small guy. It's it's awesome to watch. It's fun to watch. But he's just not good enough. And when you have a line like the third line with Anderson Dolan Moore, Grundstrom, a line that has that same energy, has that same grinding ability plays that similar style when you have guys like austin wagner who plays with that intensity plays with that that aggression and that style of play but also brings an x factor in blazing speed i don't know if blake lazat has a role in the nhl i i really don't unless he stays on fourth line center but when you look at what they're doing with him right now he's he's getting top six you know, second line center duty. And it's just, there's nothing there. And again, it's a spot you free up. Maybe a guy like Elias Anderson, who's killing it in the AHL right now, bring him back up. I don't think he's been given a fair shot by the Kings. And I don't know. I But like I said, I don't think there's a market for Lazat. I don't think you're getting much, if anything, for him. So it's an interesting one, but it is something that the Kings are going to have to do or think about because uh, he is going to need a new contract this next year. And he's making 9.25 or sorry, 925,000 this year. You're not giving him a raise. So again, it's just, there's too many players and there's too many players that are not prospects anymore. And 
they got to go somewhere. So I don't know. Maybe you look for a market for him. Not sure. The other free agent for the Fords group is Trevor Moore. I think you keep Trevor Moore 100%. He's working great on that third line. He knows his role. There's a little bit of a lack of finishing there, just like with Austin Wagner, but the overall game he plays, penalty kill, uh, I think a for sure keep a guy that once the team gets better, he'll still have a role as a fourth line guy, kind of like a Trevor Lewis. And I think he'll evolve more into that role as he continues to stay in the league. Besides that, for the Fords, I don't think there should be any more moves. Um, I guess besides Jeff Carter, which I talked about in his own video, why I think the Kings should buy out Jeff Carter. I think they need to buy out Jeff Carter tonight. The game was awful. I don't like the fact that he's getting the amount of game time he is. And honestly, it's... It's tough to watch a guy who has an A on his chest and has had one for a long time. And he's definitely a leader. He's obviously super important to the team, but his time's done. It really is. And it's time to give a younger guy a letter and let them grow and let them build some more confidence. We have people like Anderson Dolan, people like Mikey Anderson, who are touted as those future NHL captains who already are playing so much more mature than they are, maybe they get a letter. You know, maybe, uh, I mean, for right now, give it back to Dustin Brown, but, you know, free up a, a true leadership slot in the sense of one of the three letters that's going to be on the team for a young guy and, and let that change that needs to be happening from the old guard, the old five, core five, to the new Kings. Because... It needs to happen quickly. And there's not much more time for guys like Dustin Brown and Jonathan Quick. Obviously, Kopitar, Dowdy, they're going to stay for probably their whole contracts unless something crazy happens. But I think it's time to get new younger guys in that core leadership group. It can't just be the five vets anymore. And I think the way you do that is you get rid of Jeff Carter. It sucks. I, I don't like saying it, but... It's the truth. On the defensive end, uh, I don't think you make any trades. I think injuries are obviously hurting us right now. I would say maybe Olimata, if he was healthy, could be kind of a flip situation. Um, but he's not healthy, and uh, there's not really much news on Olimata. And unfortunately, he hasn't played well. So I don't know what the market would be for Olimata. So I don't think there's going to be any moves there. And in goal is the last big question. What happens with Jonathan Quick? Personally, if Jonathan Quick left, I want him to go to a great team. I want him to get a chance in the playoffs. He's a different animal in the playoffs, and he deserves that. He doesn't deserve to go out with us right now. And I know he has a couple more years on his contract, and I don't think he's he's done. I think he's still a very good goaltender, a very serviceable goaltender. But if we keep him, I think it's not a big deal. He definitely has to kind of understand the, the coming of guard or the changing of guard um, with Cal Peterson being the number one goalie for sure and and just being fine with being a backup, being a mentor. We got other young goalies in the system that he can help out as well. But I say if there's a market for him, if a team is interested, I know there was a lot of talk about Pittsburgh. If a team like Pittsburgh makes a deal, even if we're not getting much for it, I feel like you do Jonathan Quick a favor if he wants to leave, of course, and send him to a, a competitive team. Send him to a contender. Let's see what can happen to him. You know, I, I I love Jonathan Quick, and I really think he deserves to not just kind of fade into backup role for this team. He He deserves one last shot because he got robbed when we faced Vegas the last time we were in the playoffs. He played amazing. We played so bad, and Flurry just played a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, could the move happen? I guess besides Ayafala moving, I'd say that's the second most likely move. Um, maybe Athens is the second most likely, but I think those are the top three that could, would, and maybe 
in my opinion, should be dealt at the deadline. Jonathan Quick's price, I don't really know. We definitely have to eat some salary, which would hurt because he's making almost $6 million a year for the next two years. We have cap space now. It's it's not a big deal. Um, but if they go the way that I'm talking about with Jeff Carter, with buying him out, then it kind of becomes a little bit more of a problem. So ideally, you'd want to get rid of him for free. Um, and that might mean not getting anything in return or giving up a prospect in return. Not a, not a high-end prospect, but something, maybe a draft pick. But... If there's a market for quick, let him go. Let him get his chance. Even if it's to be a backup, let him be a backup on a contender. Let him be a backup in the playoffs. Maybe give a younger goalie who hasn't had that experience some motivation, some some teaching along the ride. And, you know, if you can get something, try kind of with all the moves. If you can get whatever you can get, you know, because this team... I think we're really poised for the future. There's definitely defensive depth that we lack going forward. But honestly, a lot of good defenders in the draft this year. We keep sliding farther and farther down the standings. And maybe like last year, we get a little bit lucky in the lottery. So let me know what you guys think. What would your thoughts be about losing any of those guys? Do you think there's any other players that can be moved? There was talk about... The Maple Leafs being interested in Adrian Kempe. I think it would be a good fit for Kempe. I don't think it's a good idea for the Kings. I think when you look at secondary scoring, um, there's not much. He's the only one, really. And it, it kind of baffles me that he's still being put on the fourth line for a couple games in a row. I think he has a lot of talent. And, you know, I... Maybe as a Kempe fanboy, I'm, I have to admit he's not going to reach the ceiling that he clearly had. But I think his role with the team is enough to not get rid of him. Uh, he's an RFA still after his contract, and he's not making a lot of money. And I think he's a really good kind of transition guy. I think it was Kempe, it was Ayafalo, a little bit of Sean Walker and Matt Roy, but they kind of came into the team later, but... You really look at Ayafalo and Kempe as those guys who were there right at the end of the Sutter era. Um, Kempe playing for Sutter for a couple of games and then Ayafalo coming in the next year. And they're the 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 medium. They're the, the the middle guys between the old the old guard and the prospects. And so I think it's important to keep guys like that around so that it doesn't the gap or the divide isn't too big. Just as I feel like I want to see a young guy get a letter and and be, you know, in a way, whether it be from the players or the coaching staff or the front office, kind of, you know, given the green light of, look, this is your team too. This isn't the Kopitar, Brown, Carter, Drew Doughty, Jonathan Quick Kings. This is your Kings. You're a big part of this team now. So, you know, have that freedom to be a leader, have that confidence in yourself in your game, in your abilities. That's just my opinion. So like I said, let me know what your thoughts are on potential moves. These moves, if there's anything you'd like to see, it'll be really interesting to see what happens in the next few days. I I will be very disappointed if we don't make a single move. I think it's nearly impossible we don't make at least one. I think the IFLO not having a contract extension is a huge sign. And I really do think that teams would love to have him and are calling up right now asking what the price is. And if we find a team that has a suitable offer, I think the Kings take it. I think Rob Blake, look, we've lost we've lost some very, very, you know, hard to lose guys in Kyle Clifford, in Tyler Toffoli, and even to free agency, Trevor Lewis. So it might just be that next kind of band-aid we have to pull off to to really get out of our rebuild, our retool phase, and get back into being a true team again. And a new team, the new Kings. That's what we need, and that's what Monday night hopefully will show us a little clearer picture of. Thank you guys for watching. If you did watch the whole thing, which I don't expect you to do, it was a very boring um 
very boring video with just me talking over a cat friendly page. But if you did watch the video, please leave a like. Like I said, comment down below. Um, subscribe to the channel. I review every game after the game for about five to ten minutes and they come out pretty quickly after the game so that would be a way to follow along if there's a game you missed or if you just want to get second opinion on what you saw so yeah if you could subscribe if you could like the video if you watched comment do all the youtube stuff that would really help and thank you guys for watching and let's hope for good luck